What's up YouTube? Today I wanted to cover the basics of cryptocurrency. I haven't done this before and I know I've assumed quite a bit from the people watching my videos. I think in this one I'm going to take a step back and do a beginner's guide to crypto vocabulary. And one of the reasons why I'm backtracking is because with the recent price increase to $4,000, it's brought in a lot of new interest into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of new money coming in and I'm sure there's a ton of interest. So let's get started with the beginner's guide. All right, so we're gonna start off with the beginner stuff and make it really easy. Most of these you should have already heard of and should already be familiar with, but just in case you aren't, we're just gonna cover it very quickly. So to start, we're gonna say crypto. Crypto is commonly used by a lot of people for shorthand for just talking about Bitcoin and different altcoins in general. Uh, they can be cryptocurrencies, tokens, or other utilities, but usually it's just talking about the space. Cryptocurrency is a form of crypto coin because some of them are currencies, some are utilities, some are assets. So a cryptocurrency is like a Bitcoin where you can use it and it serves like money as opposed to using it for something within the system. And a token is the opposite of that. You're actually using the token to get something out of the machine. Think of like when you go to like Dave and Buster's and uh, you change your money into that card and you use tokens. It's kind of the same thing. You use a token and then you are able to use the system. It's not quite like a coin, which is more like currency. A lagger. So a lagger is a coin, any coin or altcoin that hasn't increased by 200% or more. Typically, a lot of people would be satisfied by an in increase of 50% and up, but in the crypto space, anything below 50% is actually a lagger. Moving on, panic buying. This is, happens in every single market. When you see this, the price, when you, it's basically when you see the price skyrocket and you decide to join after it's already at a high. The opposite of that is panic selling. So it's when you see the price plummeting and you decide to sell at the very bottom when you decided you weren't going to. So usually these work hand in hand with each other. When you're trying to buy, you rush to buy. And then when it's time to sell, when you see it plummeting, you're the last one to sell. So don't do that. Typically the saying that goes with that is buy high, sell low, but you really want to buy low, sell high. And of course, in the beginner, the if only, it's what we always say to ourselves after a coin makes a run. It's like many of us say the same thing about Ethereum and Bitcoin. If only we bought more. If only I bought Ethereum instead of uh, that latte. Or... All right, that's enough for the beginner level. Now we're going to move on to intermediate. And I'm sure you've heard of people, uh, heard people saying these terms quite a bit but before we go move on here's a nice quote from william shatner so bitcoin is a cyber snob currency i thought i would share that with you guys so moving on to the more intermediate ones and i'm sure you've heard a lot of these so hodl is the first one or at first it was originally just a misspelled way of saying hold but it kind of took a life on its own and now it stands for hold on for dear life when it's falling or hold on if it's on a rocket then, of course, we have good old FOMO, fear of missing out. This feeling is the one that goes with the panic buying we talked about in the beginner section. And that basically, this is what feeds the impulse to actually buy when you're, you've told yourself you're not going to. So don't give into it, but uh, you never know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. FUD is a, is a term that's commonly used everywhere. And it stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And these are the realists and the trolls. Because people who know are either messing with people who don't, or they're trying to make you second guess your decision to max your credit cards and uh, take out that second mortgage on your home to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> so don't take these, uh, these definitions seriously. A lot of them are tongue in cheek, but you know, pretty much along the same lines of what they mean. Fogs, this one I came up with on my own. Uh, this one is fear of getting slaughtered. When Bitcoin was at a high of 3,000, I'm like, no, I don't want to buy because it's already grown, went from 1,800 to 3,000. There's no way it's going to keep going. 
The next thing you know, it goes to 4,000. So FOGS is really for those who, who think they're going to buy in too high and then right when they buy, the carpet gets pulled out from under you. So it's a fear of buying high and then the price is cratering. It happens to so many people. It's happened to me almost three, uh, plenty of times when I bought. An ICO is an initial coin offering, a.k.a. take my money. This is when uh, these companies are putting up contracts, usually in Ethereum, and offering ERC-20 tokens to in exchange for Ethereum, Bitcoin, and now uh, NEO, or what used to be called Ant Shares. Next up, we got what's called an altcoin. This one is used very commonly, and an altcoin is basically any cryptocurrency that isn't Bitcoin. So most of the time, all Bitcoiners will refer to anything that's not Bitcoin as an altcoin. And it's pretty much uh, just all secondary coins. Sometimes, though, a troll will use altcoin in a derogatory manner <laughs> in, or in a condescending way. But yeah, that just kind of comes with the territory. Next up is a whale. You'll hear this a lot in stocks, stock market, and the crypto market. Basically, it's a person who controls a large volume of the coin or of a given currency. It could be Bitcoin. They could come in with a lot of Bitcoin and then buy up the supply and then dump. Whales are what you have to fear in the crypto market because they can drive up the price and they can drive down the price. So... That leads to the very next definition, the minnow or the small fish, which is most of us in this game. Where Since we're coming in a bit later, we haven't had the price increase. So when we're buying in, we're buying in, we're paying a lot more for a lot less compared to the people who paid $200 for an, a Bitcoin two years ago. Or even $1,000 for one Bitcoin at the beginning of the year where it's up 400 times or four times now. So hopefully you're still with me and we're going to get to the last part, which is the advanced section. But before we get there, let's look at another quote by Stephen Colbert that says Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is gold for nerds. And I have to agree, coming from gold and silver, it is kind of nice to be able to move this kind of value around for cheap and fast and not have to sweat about shipping it in the mail. All right, so the last section now, we're getting to the advanced part. And this stuff you may or may not know. Uh, most of the time, you probably know what a base coin is. A base coin is what most of the other altcoins are pegged to in the cryptocurrency markets. So usually a base coin is a Bitcoin, an Ethereum, whatever the altcoin is pegged to. And these two are usually at the top. A uh, newcomer is going to be NEO and NEM or ZEM because they're going to come out with different markets. Qtum is also coming out with them, and I wouldn't, I would say, I think Stratus is basically anyone that offers a platform for ICOs. This next one up is stable coins, and stable coins are usually pegged to fiat that don't have the volatility of cryptocurrency. Like, like we were saying earlier, cryptocurrency can go up or down 50 or 100%. That's terrible if you're buying stuff or selling stuff. So a stable coin is just pegged to fiat. Whether or not the cryptocurrency goes down, your stable coin is pegged to a fiat dollar. Next is the exchange on ramp. And this is how you get your money into buy Bitcoin. Usually there are on ramps like Coinbase is an on ramp that exchange fiat for Bitcoin or cryptocurrency like Ethereum or Litecoin. Uh, in the U.S., there's Gemini and there's Coinbase. Coinbase is the most well-known. Gemini is a good second alternative. And that leads to the exchange market like Bitrex and Poloniex and Kraken, where you take your new Bitcoin and you exchange them for different altcoins. This is where the actual trading happens. And this is where it gets kind of dangerous. I mean, you can go to Ether Delta. There are all different kinds of markets, and each market is kind of known for different things. I personally stick with Bitrex because they have a, a team of lawyers that go and review all the coins that come in. They have very good processes. Uh, it's good support, too. So sticking with it, and don't fix what's broke 
what ain't broke. And next up is a smart contract. A smart contract is an independent program in the blockchain that you can interact with. So this is what this is kind of at the core of uh, Ethereum DApps. It's uh, what makes this decentralized thing possible because once you put a smart contract in place, the only way to update it is if the owner makes a modification and updates it or it's just no longer used, but it's always there. And it does everything automatically and whoever's interfacing it can read the rules first. This is why it can be hacked as well. Um, we're getting close to the end here. And the next one up is a loser. This is a coin that you buy and it sinks until you decide to pull the plug. And the reason why this is advanced is because a lot of people generally don't know when it's time to pull the plug and uh, lose a lot of value. One ex example is chain coin. A lot of people got hurt on that one. They bought high and then didn't sell because they were trying to hold. And then now it's went from $7 down to 30 or 40 cents. And finally, the one that we all want to hear, it's to the moon, a rocket, the pinnacle of when everything goes right. You bought cheap, the price is increasing and the BTC pair is increasing and it's a wonderful feeling of joy. And that's what I would like to end it on. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Thanks for watching.